Hi, and welcome to Enchantment of Eternity's Top 10 Movies of 2014. I recorded a version of this video earlier, and it ended up being 40 minutes long. So I figured most people wouldn't want to sit through a 40-minute video just to get my top 10 favorite movies of 2014. So I'm making this shorter and much more concise video for my top 10 movies of this, of this year. However, I'm still uploading my 40-minute version I recorded earlier. So if you want a video where I go in more in-depth into the movies, and why I like them, you can click the link in the description below for the extended version of my top 10 movies of 2014. So I'll start this list by giving uh, the worst movie of 2014. Thankfully, I haven't seen enough movies to justify a whole list of worst movies, as for the most part, I was smart enough to avoid movies that looked really bad. Uh, but the movie I do have to mention as the worst movie of 2014 was Pompeii. Pompeii is basically a B-movie that somehow got a big Hollywood budget to do special effects and get a lot of fairly well-known actors. But all these good actors look horrible in this movie with cheesy dialogue, cliched storytelling, and not one ounce of originality to be found anywhere. So now we move on to the best movies. And before I get to my top 10, I want to list a few honorable mentions. First is The Interview, which I only saw because of the controversy. It actually ended up uh, to be a good political satire that held my attention throughout and was quite funny. Another honorable mention is The Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 1, which was a great action flick that commented on how crucial propaganda is to a war effort, which is a subject I'm very interested in. And the last honorable mention I wanted to throw out there is Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy is one of the best uh, teamwork films uh, to come out in quite a while, and I had... Um, really great fun and it had some really great funny moments in this movie so it was a lot of fun. So now on to my top 10. Uh, coming in at number 10 is Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Uh, this film was very dynamic and realistic in its storytelling especially considering it featured talking apes riding horses and shooting machine guns. Uh, most of the characters were really well rounded. It depicted a story of how difficult it can be for two totally different groups to live together in peace despite the best efforts of many good people. Number nine is The Edge of Tomorrow. Uh, this was a fun action film that uses the little used uh, plot device of a time loop to make a fun summer blockbuster. It doesn't try to be anything else other than a fun sci-fi action film. And it succeeds very well at that and is one of the best damn fun sci-fi action films out there. Number eight is Godzilla. I typically am not a fan of giant monster movies, but this one really surprised me. A lot of people complained about this movie because you hardly see Godzilla in it. But to me, this film takes advantage of the saying, less is more. And because we hardly see Godzilla when we do see him, it's so much more awesome. I also like how the f film focuses more on the human characters who for the most part were a lot more developed and well-rounded for monster movies, so it's really managed to captivate me. Number seven is Captain America Winter Soldier. Uh, this movie really surprised me because the first Captain America movie was so awful, plus the theme of Captain America makes you think it will be about chest thumping, flag wearing, uh, patriotism, but it actually manages to make good commentary on the necessity of checks and balances and how one government agency shouldn't be given too much power. Also, it is one of the best action-packed spy movies I've seen in a long time. Winter Soldier had me on the edge of my seat the whole time, and it, there was never a dull moment. Coming in at number six is X-Men Days of Future Past. I love the X-Men, and I love time travel, so not too surprised I really like this movie. Uh, one of the best things about it is that it, it erased some of the more crappy X-Men films from history, which was awesome. But I really liked how the film brought both cast together for one film, and the plot and the plot in the post-apocalyptic future about them changing the past, creating an undercurrent of tension that was there throughout the entire film, which really worked uh, nice for the film. Plus, um, the film was filled to the brim with top-notch actors giving outstanding performances, so it's definitely worth seeing. 
Number five is Gone Girl. Uh, a return to form for director David Fincher as he turns out uh, the kind of unique film only he can make. Uh, this is another film that makes great commentary on how media and how perception is everything. How um, this ultimately becomes the arena in which the characters in the film have to play in. The mid-film twist is in this film is of course amazing as it changes your whole perspective on what the film is about. And the film features uh, some outstanding performances from its lead actors. Gone Girl is like no other film you see, so definitely one of the best of 2014. Number four is Enemy. Uh, this film technically came out in 2013 because that's when it was released in film festivals and stuff like that. Uh, but it wasn't made available to the public until 2014, uh, so I'm counting it as a 2014 movie. Enemy stars Jake Gyllenhaal as a man who meets his exact double and things deteriorate from there. I love this film because it's extremely metaphorical nature. You have to bear in mind when watching this film that a lot of the strange scenes that seem nonsensical on the surface can't be taken literally and are actually metaphors for the overall movie. Once I understood what the film was actually about, um, on the second time I saw this film, it you know made me look at the whole film in a new light and see it as a brilliant work of art. Number three is Nightcrawler, another film that stars Jake Gyllenhaal, but this film features the best performance I've seen by him and one of the best uh, performances I've seen from any actor. He does such an amazing job in this film, he deserves an Oscar uh, for Best Actor, hands down. Uh, this is another film that appeals to me for its portrayal of the media and how perceptions of reality are shaped by what the media chooses to reveal to the public, making perception of reality and actual reality not always the same thing but what this film um, is mostly about is it's a character study of a sociopath whose um, character arcs takes him from bad to worse it's fun in a morbidly twisted way to watch this sociopath get worse and worse throughout the journey of the film and the storytelling acting cinematography everything in this film is just so well done it definitely deserves recognition Number two is Predestination, a very unique time travel movie that I must describe as completely mind-blowing. Some consider Predestination a 2015 movie since that is when it will be released in America, but it was released in its native country Australia in 2014 and was released here in New Zealand in 2014, so I'm counting it as a 2014 movie. This film completely blew me away. Has some... Um, as soon as I watched it, I had to watch it again, and after I watched it again, I needed to watch it for a third time. And to me, these are the best movies, the ones that really make you think and ponder over the meeting for a long time. Uh, this film is advertised as a movie about a temporal agent who travels to the past to prevent crimes from happening. But that's uh, a little bit misleading, as it's only a small aspect of what it's really about, because one can't say what it's really about without giving away some hefty spoilers uh, but in vague terms what it's really about is a character study of someone who is the center of a time paradox and I can say no more. Ethan Hawke stars in this movie and although he is good the real star of the film is Sarah Snook who does an amazing job as she plays a woman and a man in this film and she absolutely shines in both roles. I think she is destined for stardom. Um, despite being a low budget Australian film, this film manages to be an emotional, mind bending, thought provoking film with some outstanding performances that will leave you pondering over for weeks after you see it. And my pick for number one of 2014 is Interstellar. Uh, despite all the criticism this film got, I'm going to be completely honest and go with the film that I personally felt was the best regardless of what anyone else says about it. When I watched this film, I was so captivated and amazed by it that after it was over, I couldn't move, I could barely breathe. This film had affected me like no other film had in a while. Interstellar is an amazing... Um, well-told story about a father going into space to 
save the human race that are on the brink of dis extinction. And it manages to tell a deep and meaningful personal story while playing with elements of science fiction while trying to stay true to what we know of science until we reach the realm beyond what modern science knows, at which point it becomes a lot more speculative. Some say this is a long movie, but I was so captivated um, throughout the entire film, I barely noticed the passage of time. Uh, this is a unique film like no other I'd seen before. However, it isn't without its flaws, uh, such as the ending wasn't handled as well as, as it could have been. But for me, the unprecedented greatness of this film far outweighs its downfalls. And I would say it is the most emotionally powerful, thought-provoking, and overall memorable movie experience I have had in a long time. To me, making this the best film of 2014. So that's it for my top 10 movies of 2014. You can click the link below if you want to see the extended version of this video. Uh, you should subscribe and check out my channel for other reviews I do. And thanks a lot for watching.